Tony, I appreciate you joining me. Oh, no problem, man. It's a pleasure to meet you. 2023. Yep. Now, you've been working in the tobacco business for three years? Yes, sir. And and you don't own the store. I don't. You no, work sir. for Mark? I work for Mark Castle, yes. Yeah. And how many stores are in the area? You said that two we, of them? We have two directly in Winchester. And so we're, we're outside of D.C. So we're about an hour and a half from Shelley's. And then there's one in Harrisonburg, which is an hour south. And then we've got another one a little, little bit closer in Stanton, Virginia, called Beverly's. Got it. And that's about... There's one in Martinsburg, but I don't remember the name of it. Mark bought it about four years ago. Four years ago. Okay. So you pretty much have been with Mark since he started, right? Yes. Okay. And what made you get into the retail tobacco business? Like, so I started smoking cigars when I was 16, but it was the light stuff you get from the gas station. So when I I tried a cigarette and I hated it. Yeah. Uh, But I was like, I love the smell. I didn't really necessarily like like the Phillies and all the other and the Dutch masters. I like the smell, so I would blow out of it and act like I was doing it. And then in my mid-20s, uh, I was like, you know what, getting a little older, I like cigars. I, I got into the premium cigars, and I kind of just, it's been exponential growth from there. I was like one or two a week, and now I'm one or two a day at least. Yeah. And what made you go work for it, though? Because so, did you give up a previous career? Uh, no. So Were you I doing was, it part-time? I was, I was doing it part-time. I worked in healthcare. I was taking care of a family's autistic daughter previously. And then I worked in a house uh, taking care of wheelchair adults, like I said. Uh, no, I just I was sitting in there one day because it was a day off, and Mark needed help on a weekend. And he's like, do you want to work Sundays? And I was like, well, absolutely, because if I'm in town, I'm going to be here anyway. Might as well right. work. So he's like, listen, uh, I'll pay you when I can. And I was like, Dan, you just hand me a couple of cigars, and that's my pay for the day. And it's been, it's been great ever since. Nice. Awesome. And as you've been in tobacco, being a retailer – What would you say, like, what is there any one experience that you remember that you're like, that's why I love being a tobacconist? So that would be just just the, so we we always talk about it. We have guys from every walk of life, and and cigars are the great common denominator. Because I've got a buddy that uh, is a family law lawyer, one of the best in Virginia. And he and I wouldn't interact if it weren't for cigars. Now, we found other common stuff we're interested in since we've uh, got cigars, and we'll sit, and he's probably one of my favorite people in the shop. And it's it's those connections and that great equalizer. And it's like you don't walk in, and that guy's not going to talk to you because you're not on his level. Everybody at our shop is friendly and great conversation. It's actually ruined me, so I can't sit on my deck anymore and smoke a cigar. If I want a cigar, i got to go to the shop because I need, I need that interaction. I need sure. that, that people and the conversation and that just enhances the experience for did me. you used to smoke on your own i did and now you want to go into the shop i want to go into a shop do you feel like when when you have a shop like that that has like good camaraderie amongst people how are newcomers treated do you guys welcome them in or, yes. or is it kind of tough so, to break through that no so i treat it in unofficially like my stance is i want it to be like the tv show cheers i go i go the extra mile I'm not the face of the place, but I'm there enough and I've met enough people. I make it my job to know a name. So when you walk in, I go, hey, Rob's here. And everybody's like, hey, Rob. So I want it to be like, nice. cheers. So you're taking it on yourself yes. to make sure that you're well, the welcoming community. And it's like I've told people, I don't have a financial interest, but I've got the time spent in the business. A personal. I've got the personal. Like you said, yeah. you like going there I and talking to people. I love that place. Yes. So and and Mark and I have become really, really good friends, and I love the guy to death. You got to be really extroverted. I can be. I just, I, I need, sometimes I need a day to recharge. Sure, we all right. do. Right. But do you get your energy from going into the shop? Yes. Yeah. I'll, I'll so wake up, I'll have coffee, I'll have a down day, and I'll be like, you know what, I'm in a funk. I need to go, yeah. I need to go see my people. Yes. Did the same thing for me. Fridays are my favorite days to be in yeah. the shop. Friday just having evenings, a cigar, yeah. hanging out with everyone, having a great time. We got a nice fire pit out back, so the Friday nights we're usually doing a fire pit, nice. just hanging out, and somebody will bring something to drink, and we'll, we'll share it. It's, it's, it's a wonderful time. I love it. I love it. So do you guys also have community involvement there? Like, do you guys reach back out to your community? Do you volunteer? Do you do anything that kind of gets you involved? We have. So we have a uh, festival. It's called Apple Blossom, and it happens every year in April, early May. And so there's a lot of, we've been trying to reach more out to the community, but we've we've gotten big into Cigar for Warriors. And for having one shop and being a small shop, 
uh, our rep Ethan has told us we're one of the biggest donators and we're just like, we take that to heart and we take that with pride. We're like, awesome. we want to help our veterans. We have a standing 10% uh, first responder veteran discount. So you don't even have to be a member of shop with discount. You come in, you'd be like, oh, you were but like, you, you'll see the guys with the shirt or the hat. And you'll be like, oh, a Vietnam hat. you be like, oh, thank you for your service. Here's an extra 10%. Or if I'm working on Sunday, I get a free cigar. And there's been times where I'm like, hey, man, I really want you to try this cigar. So I'll give my free cigar for the day to nice. a veteran to try. Because nice. I, nice. I didn't serve, but my dad was Navy. I had an uncle that was in the Navy. My grandfather was in the Air Force. So that's really important to us. Sure. So you guys do a lot of stuff for Cigars for Warriors with yes, the sir. community, and then everyone supports it. Yep. That's awesome. Awesome, awesome. As somebody who works part-time, I work part-time in retail, you work part-time in retail. If there's somebody else out there that really wants to start working part-time in retail, what would you tell them the top three things they need to do? Uh, so I always, that's the one thing I love about the cigar industry is I still call myself a novice. Like my knowledge in the last three years has exponentially grown and I feel like there's still a lifetime of stuff to learn. So it's just start learning what you like and trying to explain it well to people and take your recommendations seriously because it doesn't do me any good to recommend a bad cigar. Right. The other thing is stop refer because you'll see your guys and be like, oh, that's a, that's a terrible cigar. Uh, one of the things I had to learn was don't say it's a terrible cigar. I'm like, that's not a cigar for me. That's not in my palate, but I think you might love it based on what you've told me. Right. Because palate is so subjective. You can't is. say the cigar is terrible. It's it a great is. cigar. You just don't like the right. flavor. And, and just because you say it's terrible, it could be well constructed. It could burn great. It could like That's there's smart. nothing wrong with the cigar. Right. It is just not for you. And you need to emphasize that. You need a word choice. The word yes. choice is very important. Yes. Terrible cigars is something we don't want to say. Right. We verbiage, Flavor clear, profile concise. Is not for me. Right. What else did you learn about like how you're dealing with customers, how you're choosing your words? What were some other big things that came up? Or is that the number one? Uh, just so, like I said, with the cheers thing, just being friendly, being outgoing, asking if they need help. And if they're like, man, I'm just looking around. You're like, all right, man, take your time. If you have any questions, come see me. Or you say, did you find everything today? They're like, no, I was looking for this. Because it's like, as a, as a brick and mortar, you can't carry everything. Right. And as a guy that's like, I'm not a one cigar, like that's my cigar I smoke. So I'm not, I'm all over the place. So we do, we do events and stuff. I do a mix and match box. Because I'll, I have a locker there, and I'll look at my locker, and I've got, you know, 50 cigars in there. And I'm like, no, I don't want any of those today, and I go buy more. Right. Because I turned into a cigar nerd. So <laughs> it happens. Now, what about, okay, so I know when I was in part-time retail, the big thing was, hey, I really like this cigar. What would you recommend? And I may not have smoked that cigar. What do you do <sighs> then? I try to ask them about what they liked about it. Try to get a, try, try to get, so like palate subjective and, and what you get out of it. So I try to get an idea of what they get. And if I can't figure it out, I'll be like, okay, is it medium body? Is it medium strength? Like I try to figure out where they are. It's one of the first things I've, I've learned to ask, are you a light, medium, or full smoker? Do you like, and when you're a full smoker, do you like full body? Do you like full flavor, but not necessarily a full punch in the face, like strong cigar? Right. And some guys will be like, I don't like it really. So we'll, we'll tailor to that. And so we got new guys come in. We're like, we recommend a Connecticut and we've got a sampling of Connecticut's. And it's like, if they've never smoked before, we go to one of our lighter Connecticut's. And if they smoked occasionally, we'll be like, try this step up. Cause it's like a medium to a, it's a mile to a mile plus. So it, it, it's, it's a, it's a learn as you go type of thing. And you can't be afraid. You can't be afraid to make a bad suggestion. You just got to be willing to make that suggestion, stand by it. And if you make a bad one, you've got to, uh, try to step it up next time okay. so every shop has a personality and a persona mm -hmm. what famous person embodies your shop's personality oh that's a good one so you meet somebody famous and you're like not sure what to expect so i would be like you want to the celebrities that are down to earth and just awesome guys so one of the guys at our shop was actually a lawyer for one of somebody in dan Aykroyd's family Okay. And he had to go and do a couple things with Dan Aykroyd. And instead of just sitting there awkwardly, he asked him like a random movie or film industry question and just sparked guy and, and his eyes lit up. Or I think like like the best case scenario, because we saw Guy Fieri at the opening party and he's like a down to earth, not a snob. So any any celebrity like that, that's personable, friendly, I would say one of those two guys. 
Dan Aykroyd. I'm also a giant Ghostbusters fan. So there you go. <laughs> that's that's the shop persona. So that's what you need is right. somebody down to earth, willing to say hi to you, just like you are. Welcome you into the community and start trying cigars. Thank you so much, Tony. Thank you so much, Rob. It was a pleasure you. to meet you, man. Yeah, man.